Heard on Thursdays with Nikki is about to go live online. Catch HOT, the iconic radio show that made Philippine FM Radio Talk every Thursday on The Monster. Streaming video on The Monster Facebook page at RX931, The Monster YouTube channel at RX931, and twitch.tv slash monster RX931. You heard on Thursday's host, Nikki Porter. Stand by and enjoy the program. Nikki Porter back with you for more hot conversations on HOT. That's heard on Thursdays, the show that made Philippine FM radio talk. And you hear it only on Manila's hottest monster RX 93.1. So let's get right to it. When you're the child of a famous artist, it could be Bane or Boon. If you decide to become an artist yourself, you could try to escape the shadow of your parent, move as far away from their reputation as possible, and forge your own identity. Or you could embrace that heritage, follow the same track, and see where it gets you, and still forge your own identity, like how Stella McCartney did, how Liv Tyler did, or even Liza Minnelli did. So tonight's guest, Anna Orlina, she followed the latter course and found her own place there. She is the daughter of the father of Philippine glass sculpture, Ramon Orlina, who, whose achievements have graced many a great home and a great public venue locally and internationally, while many of his other works are enshrined in Museo Orlina, which opened in 2014 and has since become an important tourist destination in Tagaytay. So Anna finished multimedia arts at DLSCSB, or De La Salle College of St. Benilde, but decided to be a glass artist herself. So aside from being reared in an artistic family, she took intensive glass courses abroad in famed glass schools in Washington State, in New York, and the Czech Republic. Her own work has won acclaim as well, and she just held her debut exhibit at the annual Sculpture Review of Manila Art 2022 from October 19 to 23 at SM Aura. Heard on Thursdays, we're, bla- we're blaking. We're breaking glass ceilings tonight with Anna Orlina. Hey! Hi. I believe you are on mute. Let me fix that for you. Oh, are sorry. You- Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Great start the show. <laughs> 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 well, okay, so I usually like to start the show off by asking uh, a question I ask all of my guests. So it's pandemic related. So you were probably, I don't know how you were during the pandemic, but were you busy in the workshop crafting and creating works during the pandemic? Or what were the things that kept you sane during that time? Um, so uh, right before pandemic, the plan was always... Um, to build my own studio because my dad has his own studio and I learned all these um, techniques and using different machineries from abroad. So I wanted to bring those machines in and um, put set, set them up in my own studio. And so before pandemic, the plan was to build my studio. Um, but during uh, that, that's what I did um that was the process we built it but it took a very very long time i think we started in around 2020 and i just finished it this june of 2022 so i well i'm glad that finally it's is it all has it all come together are you waiting for a few more things to complete it um it's all there it's just because some of my machines were in storage for so long because I got them in like 2019. <laughs> there, you know, I'm having some technical issues with some things. So I have to like fix them, but it's all good. Like it, it's all a learning process also. Yeah. And I hope it all works out. Like you figure Dang. out the technical issues with them for sure. But did yeah. you always know you were going to pursue glass sculpting? Because I know you took multimedia arts in CSB. And I know, of course, multi- uh, like CSB doesn't have like a specific course on like glass art. So how yeah. did you like, d- how did that come about? So I don't know. I think ever since I was young, I was always like the artistic um 
child among my siblings. There's four of us. And I'm the youngest girl. So, I don't know. Ever since I was little, my parents were always like, Oh, mana kay daddy. Uh, Anna's gonna follow in his footsteps and stuff like that. And so, I I was always like naturally inclined to art. Um, that's why I took multimedia art because I liked art, but I didn't know like which specific medium, like what about art um, I wanted to go into. And then eventually after <laughs> after I finished college, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to start going to go into glass. And I, I even had some regrets. Like I should have taken industrial design, which is a bit <laughs> closer to glass, but mm-hmm. no regrets. Like, at least I know how to market myself, <laughs> not <laughs> assets. But yeah, it's it's really helpful to have like the art foundations, like all yeah. the basic things from from schooling. Um, then I just decided, okay, I should start doing class now um, while I'm still young, kind of. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it it just happened naturally, and uh. I had some pressures from my parents and and other people, but like I really enjoyed glass. Like once I started doing it myself and learning, mm-hmm. I somewhat got addicted to it, like nice. in my own way. So it, it was a very smooth process from then. That's great. Well, also with you being an artistic or leaning into the artistic side of the family. I as like, and I'm gonna break it to the monsters also. I know I know Anna from school. I know Anna from high school, grade school. And so I you were always a, the creative one. Like I can name like people who were just visually creative, and you were one of them. That's why I was like, I was always envious of like the like, oh my god, how could they do this? How could they just like come up with something in their minds and like it'll just show up on the paper or something like that so you know i i always remembered you as like one of the creatives back back in school so um for you taking up multimedia arts were there other media though that you were interested in before glass oh yeah for sure um so i was really into graphic design for a long time like i started dabbling in photoshop since i was like 12 years old so like even before college and you know that's where i was leaning towards like multimedia arts and they were saying like oh yeah the the digital is where it's going which is quite true like now (laughs) there's so many graphic artists and it's also very needed um but i've also learned different um, mediums in college like photography film there's even like game design web design like i made my own website and stuff like that it's very helpful and very useful um yeah i realized taking like the basic classes like color design and freehand and like all the um traditional art I really, I really did well in those, and it made me also realize, oh, maybe I should have gone to a more traditional setting. But uh, I'm glad I can at least do both. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I think glass for sure. Glass here in the Philippines, like you can. Well, for me, I only know I only know one person who's like a glass sculptor. Well, two now, I guess. <laughs> that they're related to each other so it's not a super well known i guess like um you don't know a lot of artists i guess uh for for someone like me also who are in that medium for sure so but but when it came to your early beginnings into glass uh sculpting can you recall that moment when you were like maybe you should take glass after all (laughs) like what was the moment (laughs) um so after college, I worked in a art gallery called Secret Fresh. So I was there for six months. And it was good because I got like outside um, kind of training that's, you know, not in-house, you know, not Orlina Museum or, you know, it's from an outside source. So it was good 
um, experience. And from there, I was thinking, oh, I I can make um, like something like this or something like that. Like I got a lot of inspiration. And once I got to the six month point, I was like, okay, I should, you know, lean into glass now, especially because my dad um, was the one who mentioned Pilchuck Gas School, mm-hmm. which is um, in Washington State. Mm-hmm. And he, he's met Chihu Lee, uh, who created Pilchuck back in like the 70s. So, <laughs> so he's the one who suggested, oh, why don't you and your brother? Because at that time, my brother had a long um, vacation. Like, it was the time where K-12 was like developing. And so yeah. the the schedules changed. The school, summer break. Yeah, yeah. Humaba in summer. Yeah. So he uh-huh. went with me to Pilchak. And there we were just exposed to so much glass and glass art. And not just like the glass art my dad does, but like um, other mediums of glass, like uh, glass blowing, flame working, glass casting. There's so, so much more to what we've seen here that it's like the potential is so great. There's so many things to do. Yeah, yeah I love that. And I love that, it, you know, it really did open your eyes. For, oh, there's more than one way pala. <laughs> yeah, but that's art, and I think that's really cool for sure. And when you, but, but when you you mentioned earlier, like your parents, they saw like you had an uh, artistic creative side, and you were saying, um, our man, na kay dad. Yeah. Or, was there some hesitation though, like on your end, when you decided to try for glass uh, sculpting, mm-hmm. but it was also like following your dad's footsteps. Like, was there some hesitation about? Mm, yeah. I, should I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when when I decided like, oh, I want to lean into this, I decided like from then, like, I cannot do the same thing as my dad. Sure, I can do something similar, which is cold working. Like, I wanted to stay in that realm of cold working, which is what my dad does. But mm-hmm. I needed to be different from him. I needed to find a way or a technique that I can still do my dad's technique but it's still me it's still distinguishable from yeah. his works yeah. and so i and i think if people will start to look up your name and even like you know just guys just type like anna orlina and then you'll see these articles and you'll see samples of her of her sculptures like girl they're beautiful i'm just oh, saying thank you <laughs> it's so nice and it's very like colorful and it's like refreshing to look at so at least that's how i felt like that was my interpretation of the art that you um that you were offering so what was your dad's reaction was he the man excited or was he like "Mm, sure you want to do this yeah i know he was he was very excited he was very happy like when me and my brother went to pilchuck he was so happy that when we came back we were so excited about glass you know that we found this like you found love for it because mm. growing up around glass, you're kind of like your friends would go, oh, Wow, your dad's sculpture so amazing and stuff like that. And I'm like, Yeah, but like I've been told that my whole life. So it's kind of like dulled down in a way. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, this is glass. Yeah, this is glass sculpture. But <laughs> I was I was so used to it that when I finally saw a different side to it abroad. I was like filled with this interest, this uh, admiration for glass as well, and how hard it really is to hmm. do any type, any any form of glass, and how hard it is to do my dad's glass as well. That's why we have so many assistants to help because it's very tedious and it takes a long time to finish works. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, as we all know, glass is breakable, it's fragile. So it's like, you have to be, I guess, very careful when it comes to creating glass, because I guess, any wrong move or any wrong cutting, or I don't know the terms, but <laughs> <laughs> like, you can ruin it, you can ruin it at any given moment, at any given uh, step, like, uh, as you are creating your art. But 
the, like with you telling me that your dad was very excited. So was your dad actually hoping that like, at least one of my children would be a glass sculptor? Like was that what he was dreaming? Yes, of? yes. That ever since he was like at least one of my children, the artistic one, na lang. <laughs> Siempre, it's like the obvious. Yeah, but my my brother's also dabbling. Um, he's five years younger than me, and he took art management also in CSP. So mm-hmm. you always make this joke where, oh yeah, I'm the artist, and he's my he'll be my manager, just like my dad and my mom, just oh. like that. To like he'll do my mom's job for me. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, at least you're still keeping it in the family, then, on the Yeah, it's still a family business, so to it's speak. Still, yeah. <laughs> Now, um, as you were, um, as you know, having an artist, a famous artist as a parent and who's renowned in his medium, no less, did that have pressure na rin, na parang with your other siblings? Or are, they, uh, are they also in artistic pursuits or is it just you and your brother? Um, it's just me and my brother. But for my older sisters, no naman, like um, they did, they're doing what? they wanted to um my eldest sister was always into it like ever mm-hmm. since but then you know, when she went to college my mom was like no you have to take like business or something so she did take business but uh she took her master's in it so eventually mm-hmm. she she ended up doing what she wanted my, that's my eldest sister mm-hmm. um naisa who just arrived from australia today with um, her husband and my niece, oh. Mari. So yeah, I'm very excited to see them. They're quarantining right now just to be safe. But yeah, and my second sister, Ning Ning, she's actually a civil engineer, but um, she's working now in Germany for the mother company of Food Panda called oh. uh, Food Deliver, uh, Food Hero. Or something like I forgot the name. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah. I mean, at least there is that mix, no, in the family. Na, they're you're still doing what you want, and I think that's really great that your parents are also supportive, no matter what the pursuit yeah. you guys wanted to take. So, um, for all the monsters who are tuned in, I'm talking to Anna Orlina, who's a glass sculptor, and uh, we are talking about art, or at least I am trying to, because I am an enthusiast. Enthusiast, enthusiast. Um, <laughs> so, let's get back into you, your journey in glass sculpting. So, you studied in Washington State in the Czech Republic, and, yeah. and this is all to hone your glass sculpting skills. So, mm-hmm. how was it like though in art school? Was it, um, is it as competitive as like you know how TV shows and movie shows like oh, like my art is better or something? <laughs> <And> <laughs> Or was it more where I'm pretty sure there were different personalities uh, that mm-hmm. were part of it for sure. But was it it's more true. supportive or collaborative instead of competitive uh, in art school? Yeah, most definitely. It was really, I think because glass itself and people who do glass art, there's so little of us internationally even. So it's really a close tight-knit group. It's like you, everyone knows everyone, which is pretty much amazing because like it's a very supportive group as well like um i would with my knowledge um with cold working um i i would like help my classmates and then they would help me as well like it's it was just like a very um good environment very supportive because the the classes i took um it wasn't like a regular school I didn't go to like um, take a master's or a bachelor's degree. I just mm-hmm. took very in- intensive short courses. Um, this is because uh, if I went to like a college, I would have to do other glass mediums that I wouldn't want to or need to do, like such mm-hmm. as glass blowing, because mm-hmm. glass blowing is very inaccessible, he- especially here in the Philippines. Wow. And so it it would kind of be a skill that would kind of be useless for me because I wouldn't be um, exposed to playing with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I took the intensive courses where, you know, I can pick what classes right. yeah. I wanted to take. And with that, you're you're set with classmates who are also in the same mindset, like, oh, I want to learn this. And it's great. I love, especially in Corning Museum of Glass, the mm -hmm. studio classes there. It's like, has a wide age range you know like i have classmates who are like 60 years old who are <laughs> doing glass as a hobby and it's it's an expensive hobby but it's still amazing of with what the things they do or they can do and some of them they would just start off with glass as a hobby and then eventually they'll turn it into their careers even as late as 50 60 years old so it's never too late to to start doing art and like any art. Yeah. So so tell me now. I've all I've you mentioned it more than once. I think that it's um or it's something that you can get obsessed with or something that you can get addicted to. So tell me what is it about glass sculpting that you are just so like like I'm obsessed with the whole like process. But like in like as an artist, I guess. Yeah. Why do you love it so much? Um, it's, it's really interesting. Like when you just see a piece of glass, I kind of can analyze how it was already made. Wow. You know, that's, that's how interesting it is to me. Like I would see like just a glass in a restaurant and I'll, I'll look at the edges or the sides and I'll be like, okay, this is a uh, mold blown, you know, like I already know, like, I could tell what are the processes it took to make this glass, especially if it's like handmade or if it's made by machine, you can tell. And the more expensive ones are obviously the the handmade because it took, you know, it takes a lot of skill and time for them just to get to that level of skill to make. Sure. And you just appreciate it more than if it was, you know, like machine made. And Sometimes you see another piece of glass, like, how did they make this? You know, mm -hmm. then it gets your brain, like, rolling. And you're, you get interested, like, what process did they do to make this? Or how long did it take? Or how hard did they have to work just to make this piece? And mm -hmm. it makes you really appreciate, like, the artistry and all the work it goes that goes into this piece of art. Mm -mm. Yeah. Or when you, I think, I like that you were asking all of these questions, like, you know, how much time did it take and everything like that, because I will get to those questions for you, at <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to you, when we're talking about you glass sculpting the mismo. But what is it also that you find beautiful about working with glass or creating glass um, and glass sculptures in particular, either you're admiring them or as you make it? Um, I think it's just, well, for me, in, in like in regards to my work, they just come out pretty, and <laughs> that's just what I like. <laughs> you know, they, they come out nice. Like, um, it's it's a trial and error thing for my work. So, like, I'll think, okay, I want to use this piece. I want to use this color, and then eventually I'll be like, oh, I don't like it. Let's change this. Let's change that. Um. Yeah, it's just, it's a interesting process. And then the outcome is just more beautiful than I've expected. Because when I'm making the process, we're like grinding it a lot or cutting it. So you don't get the clarity like you mm -hmm. see right. in the end. You see just like dull, almost yeah. stone-like figures or shapes that um, I'm putting together and then up up until the end, that's the only time you actually see the full result or the the impact altogether. So mm. it's kind of interesting and like you have to think of it also um, in advance. Like you, you have to try to visualize it in advance, like how it would look, which is kind of hard. But, like, I think with practice, like, with my dad, um, you know, he has a lot of practice with that. 
it, <laughs> it will come more naturally. So also my dad still helps me with even with my pieces. Like, um, you know, I would go to him for advice, like, oh, what should we do with this piece? Or should I um, cut it this way? Um, and, you know, he's always there to advise me. And he's very happy that, mm. you know, he he's like, um also teaching me yeah. at the same time so yeah it's it's a very interesting and fun but long and tedious process mm. so i don't know that's that's just where it, yeah that's where it goes yeah, and i think i feel like it's also more um what do you call this um tactile or what is it like how like the process of like you moving from one place to another and like doing like that like what you said you're you're kind of like i forgot the terms that you were saying but then it was just you know, there was there's a lot of hand handy work that, that comes into sculpting i think that as yeah. it goes into any sculpting medium anyway but this one it's like more delicate because it's like i feel like i could break and so like has it ever happened that you're in the middle of mm. creating this piece and then bigla na lang, it's like you actually it, it cracked or it, or it broke or it fell. How does yeah. that feel for you after all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I'm not gonna lie, it's like annoying. Like there are times like I'm grinding and then you know I miss something or I didn't do something and the piece slips and mm. like a piece of it cracks. I'm like, oh. Okay, I need to, I need to figure a way how to reshape it. Basically, it's like, oh, okay, this piece is gonna be smaller now, I guess, because a chunk broke <laughs> off. But um, it just goes. I, I mean, it's really like a go with the flow kind of process. Like, um, I had a piece like um a butterfly piece that I showed in Manila Art. It's called Metamorphosis, mm -hmm. and it's a big butterfly and the wings is uh, blue and purple but the initial version of that was a much smaller piece that just had purple wings mm -hmm. and um, so in my process I was still kind of learning in a way I was thinking oh yeah we can piece it together like glue it together first and then we'll shape it afterwards but then once we were shaping it it cracked right in the middle and i'm like okay that's a buzz like we, we can't use this piece anymore and so um one of my assistants was like why don't we just make a bigger version of this you know we'll just have the same idea but we'll just get new glass um and make and make it again and so i i was like okay let's do it again uh, but then I decided to change the colors up a bit and mm -hmm. make it bigger, which my dad wants. You know, he's like, you're making art pieces, artworks. You know, you don't want tiny little, um, what's this, paper holders. You know, you want, <laughs> you want the big, you want uh, uh, to showcase a big yeah. work. And so my dad was like, uh, okay, do it again. I'm like, okay, sure. And eventually, I mean, it came out really good. That's what we exhibited. I'm really happy with the piece. That's one of my favorite pieces in the show. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I call it metamorphosis because, you know, obviously like butterfly. But I also named it specifically because um, of Hilary Duff's first album. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Best album ever. <laughs> yeah, that was like the first album I ever bought with my own money. Mm. So it, it, it has a special place in my heart, that album. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny you mentioned that. Now that I think about it, I feel like that's the first album I ever owned because my sister gave it to me for like Christmas or something. <laughs> that's all I remember. Like it's like midget teal, greenish, bluish in the background, right? Yes, yes. She's wearing like dangling, I think, butterfly or something like that i can't remember properly but yeah. yeah i remember that so well but i love that you mentioned that too i was like oh my god this is so <laughs> that, that's what you should mention like in the articles <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. 
<laughs> no, it's really great. Though. And so thank you for telling me like the no <laughs> reasoning behind that. But I also like I know that the theme of um the animal sculpture review is or like Manila art is like forging futures. And so you also mentioned in one of the articles that metamorphosis is kind of like um a metaphor for you now because this is was your debut exhibit. Yeah. So how did how did first of all like how did that feel for you to, to finally showcase like your pieces? What was the feelings prior to the event and then when it actually happened? Okay, so prior to the event, I was like, of course, like very nervous. I was like, okay, I have to um, prepare all these things, you know, all the prep work that gallery stuff does. Also, like the the certificates and the mm -hmm. all the gallery stuff, yeah. boring yeah. stuff, <laughs> <laughs> boring stuff. But um, yeah, and. One of my good friends was also the ones who was um, organizing Manila Art and um, working for Gallery 9, which is um, kind of what annual sculpture, sculpture review is under. So mm -hmm. Gab Loste, um, a good friend of mine. So he, he is also like the next generation because his mom is the one who owns Gallery 9 and he's helping mm -hmm. her. And so it it's really fun because it's like all the next generations are kind of like doing this art scene now and we're helping and we're growing and it's really fun. So I think it was so perfect also like forging a future, you mm -hmm. know? Um, yeah. Sorry. What's the question again? <laughs> I can't <laughs> No, like, what, was, what was like the feeling of like before you already discussed it? It I, was like ner you were nervous, but then during like when it opened, I guess like what what was like the final feelings of like okay, uh, this is like I'm finally gonna see it. Yeah. <laughs> so when when we were actually there, nah, it was relief. Like okay, okay. you know you know because all the prep work beforehand with me and Gab. It's like, okay, we're doing this, we're doing this. And then once it happened, I'm like, I can relax now. Like, it's out there. Just, you know, wait for the buyers, people interested. And, you know, hopefully I get like a bit of um, recognition. <laughs> like, yeah. kind of like, you know, I mean, like, get recognition in terms of like oh this is a new artist and like oh maybe we can get her works you know like potential future buyers and yeah. stuff yeah but i'm really glad um how it turned out because like so many people reached out to me and um <laughs> i've been messaging a lot of people like lately, I'm so sorry I have no new works right now. <laughs> it's just really sad. Like, I feel bad because, you know, I mean, because the glass sculptures take a long time to finish mm. uh, from start to end. It takes me around three to four months ish. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, for those six pieces that I showcased, um, which were new in 2020, to um, those took three to four months. And, wow. uh, you know, it's like, I don't have any more pieces, but please be patient with me. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And cool. and also, like, with the price ranges as well, because I showed, like, very big pieces, mm -hmm. which is what my dad does. Um, mm -hmm. my, my mom priced it quite high. So, uh, so... <laughs> Like the people in our generation, like uh, you know, like sister, my sister's friends, and mm -hmm. like um, some of like my friends' parents, they they came to me and like, oh, I want to buy, but your price range is quite <laughs> high. I'm like, don't worry, I'm going to make up small to medium range, you know, sizes. Oh, so that yeah. it, it'll be more affordable, especially for our generation. Because, you right. know, yeah, like I want to <laughs> reach out, not just to like my dad's 
friends or dad's collectors or like you know that generation i want to like um reach out also for this generation so yeah. I, i'll be making a lot of um different sizes different price range of pieces <laughs> which i hope people will enjoy but it, it'll just take time that's yeah. it <laughs> And that's very understandable naman for artists. Like, it will take some time. So, for those who want an Anna Arlena piece, just, you know, hold on. Like, let her be inspired. <laughs> yeah. And try and uh, figure out what the next pieces will be. But I love that. So, am, is it safe to assume? Like, how did the six pieces uh, do at the at Manila Art? Like, did you, did you sell them? Uh, <laughs> um, it, it did <laughs> It did well. Like it was sold out, so it was very good. I love that. Yay. Oh my gosh, that's so great! Yeah, <laughs> so it, it was sold out. I think the day of, or even the day before. Wow! It showcased. Yeah. Oh wow, Anna, that's yeah. just so cool. And I'm talking to you right now. It's sold out. <laughs> right. love it. That's amazing. And and I think also for a lot of I like that you also mentioned, no, na parang, you know, there's a lot of people who are our age might want to procure art, but then yun nga, there's like uh, the price range will differ. And so I, I can't wait to see your like smaller pieces because again, I am part of that market, right? <laughs> of course. I think it's amazing uh, how you're able to do that um, at Manila Art. So congratulations. Thank congratulations. you. Now, for you. Now, um, for all the monsters who tune in and talking to Anna Erlina, look her up if you haven't yet. <laughs> She's a glass sculptor, and like so far, the works that I've seen on online are just so like very colorful, and it looks very precise. Also, the way they're they've been cut. Again, this is coming from someone who is an enthusiast at art, but you know, is not like very technical in like mm, the lighting here. I mean, like the light. <laughs> and i don't know how to do that but, but it's, it's really beautiful how you um how you're able to find this art and you know make it your own and in spite of you having a father who is like a father of philippine glass culture. yeah so what is it that you um love about like actually before that question i want to know when you were in manila art scene did were there buyers who were actually going up to you asking you questions? What were the questions you were usually asked? It, yeah. Um, mostly of the buyers would ask, like, how much is it? How much? <laughs> <laughs> and first year, yeah. I, I would just say um, a, a a range, but I mm -hmm. wouldn't disclose yeah. it because that, that is up to the gallery. That's the gallery's job to, mm -hmm. to tell them. But... Um, yeah, they would ask me also like, oh, how long does it take? Um, yeah, two to four months around. Yeah. And um, like, uh, like how did I do it? Or like, how do I put the colors together? So um, mm -hmm. what I do, which is different from my dad, is I, I laminate the glass. So, so it's called laminated cold work glass. So I kind of like glue them together. So I glue the different colors of glass. So I usually get like a clear with a color and I pair them up and, um, you know, try to make a form out of them. Um, a lot of my works, I mean, if it's just very geometrical, like for now, that's what people's noticed. And it's uh, very like, based on nature and just natural forms mm -hmm. so yeah the, the that's like the questions they would ask me like oh how how do you um think of it or how do you form it um some of the pieces actually i would make it because it's terra terra of my dad's pieces so mm -hmm. he would make a piece because he only does one color so he'd make a piece and like, for example, a purple piece, and then he'll cut off these chunks that he doesn't want. And mm -hmm. I would take those chunks and recycle them and try to build something out of it. So yeah, one of 
pe- the people's favorites, I think, is a sculpture called Setting Sail, which is a boat. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, the pieces that I made the boat with is the Taratara, like from, oh, no. from my dad's works. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, okay, like, it was fun also making it. It was kind of like Lego in a way or building blocks. Like, how do I put this together or try to make a form out of it? Right. Um, yeah. It's At least fun. I worked out, no? <laughs> tera tera. Did you tell them it was like tera tera or was it like... Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I told them like, oh, yeah, you know, for this piece, this was actually tera tera that I just, uh, you know, recycled, you know. I, I really didn't, I don't like putting glass pieces to waste, mm. especially because, you know, just the glass itself is expensive. So that is one of the reasons why it is quite costly, but it's because even just the raw materials are, are quite costly. I don't want to waste it. Mm-mm. So if I could recycle it, I will. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think actually if it's like the tera tera of the, of like of your dad's pieces, I think it gives it more character. There's a story behind this, you know? <laughs> it's a quirky one. Like that. Yeah. So, um, but have you ever, though, have you ever had people critique your works, naman? Maybe harsh um, or like, like against compared to your dad's sculpting, though, or something like that? Have you ever experienced that? No, naman. Like, as of now, no, naman. But I think I'm the harshest critic. To myself, because even the works that I put out, I'm like, oh, I can see this imperfection here. Oh, this one wasn't good. You know, oh, I can see a mistake here. So it's like, okay, I will just learn from it and like try to, you know, correct it next time or do better. But I think I I myself is uh, my harshest critic. Um, I think. One of um, the buyers was was looking at the boat and he got this piece called Firm Foundation and he was asking me, how come my piece isn't as shiny as that one? <laughs> and so I was like, oh, and I think it's because that piece, the Firm Foundation, it is the biggest piece and heaviest piece. It's like around 80 pounds. 80 plus pounds it was it was the last piece to be done for the show and so we were kind of rushing it and i think we didn't polish it enough so Mm. it wasn't as shiny so i was like don't worry we're we'll just bring it back we'll we'll make it shinier for you (laughs) we'll polish it more yeah yeah. at least at least that's an easy fix we can yeah we can fix that yeah, I love that. So, well, I mean, at least uh, at least you were able to sell out and that, you know, people really did, I guess, resonate with your art. And it does, again, monsters. It looks so beautiful. When when you, I think uh, I read that you collaborated with your dad for a piece called Pastel Sunrise. Yeah. Like, how, like, did you see him when you guys were collaborating? Did you see him as your dad or just like this glass sculptor in the zone? Yeah. <laughs> for this no i i just see him as my dad because you know i would always just see him like designing sculptures just in the yeah. sala and stuff so it's like it's it's normal it became <laughs> a normal everyday thing um so when we did the collab um my second sister also did a collab with my dad and so did i and um it was more he was doing this technique he was trying out how to put color into the glass and this was before i went to study and so he wanted you know to kind of play with the glass a little bit see how we can put color and he was able to do it with some pieces and so when he pitched to me and my sister like oh let's do a collaboration we're like okay let's do it and obviously, he's there to, like, guide us the whole time. And it, it is still his style, like, what we were doing, his style of cold working. Um, but at least we had, like, the freedom. Like, for me, I, I got to choose the colors 
because like I wanted like pastel, like something different from what he did also, which is more um, basic colors. You know, um, I did a pastel, and I chose like where I wanted the surfaces to be colored as well. So it was it was a fun project, and that piece is also one of the favorites in the manila art like people were like oh, i want to be i want this piece i want to buy this piece and i'm like i'm so sorry it's not for sale <laughs> it's a personal piece it, oh, it's, in the, it's in the it's in the artist collection so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i'm sure you that's something that's near and dear with you for sure and, yeah and when and I also know, and I saw, and I think this is my favorite piece of one of yours. Like, you made a tribute for your dad and a Dutch painter. I think it's called yeah. Montgian or something. Yeah, Montgian. So, it's so, like, because the reason why I love it so much is because, for one thing, okay, it's just, like, it's a cube, but then it's, like, it has so many layers of, like, the, the painting that we all know of the Dutch artist. So, I was like, at first, I was like, this reminds me of this one painting. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, it's that painter. But <laughs> I thought it was a different person. But the way that, you know, how it was so, um, what's this? Like, it was so perfectly cut. I don't know. But it was just like the different layers of colors. It was just so amazing. Like, that, that really caught my eye. So, like, how did you go about that process? Um, so, that process, uh, it's one of the processes I learned abroad in Corning. Mm -hmm. And um, the original piece that I made of Montreal, that's I made it in Corning. I made it there abroad. Mm -hmm. And it's actually just this small. It's around okay. this okay. small. Like, it can fit in my hand. And, um, yeah, because obviously I was like, my dad brought me here so I could study. And, you know, the reason why I'm, in glass or doing glass because of my dad so i wanted to make one of the first pieces for him and he loves Montreal. it's like one of his favorite artists and so like i just made a play of words like because ramon yeah ramon, Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that, and because the the colors that were available for us or to us to use in this process were also the primary colors. I'm like, primary colors, Montreal, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that was the first uh, piece that I made with those colors. And um, eventually when we I came back, my dad loves it, loved it so much that he wanted to make a bigger version as well. So oh. I did make a bigger version that I used also to submit to the Mullen Low Nova Manila yeah. competition. Right. And I, I was um, one of the top 10 finalists <gasps> for, for that. Um, and we had a exhibit. So it was nice that I also got to exhibit um, my work. Mm -mm. Like that was like just my own. So that was the first time um exhibited but it was not for sale so this is why <laughs> it was also um I, I can't say that was my debut be mm -hmm. because you know it 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 was still a personal piece mm -mm. for my dad but yeah it was it was really fun to have that exhibited as well um that process um i didn't use in manila art like when the sculptures mm -hmm. there because it's a bit more complicated because I'm yeah. putting like colors in between the yeah. clear glass. Mm -mm. And it's still a technique that I have yet to perfect. So I that's like I said, I'm like the bit the biggest critic. <laughs> and I don't wanna like put it out there yet. Um until like I kind of you know got it down better. Um mm -hmm. it's a bit temperamental i can say so that's why i i've been avoiding it at first so oh i was thinking <laughs> i'll do you know it's also don't show all your cards just yet you know yeah. like i i'll do like simple basic stuff first and then as an artist i can always evolve later like there's yeah. no time limit or time pressure for me you know for that so 
yeah, I, I will be making more of those kinds of stuff in the future. But uh, for now, I'll just stick with um, my basics first. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's still a learning experience. Like, every time I'm in the workshop and making things, uh, something goes awry or you have to think on your feet. It, lots of problem solving. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Real character, but... Uh, quite there <laughs> yeah, um, very too i'm sure <laughs> yeah but in the end the product is always gonna be satisfactory like it's always gonna be great when i finish a project or finish a piece like no matter what yeah i'm sure it's like a sigh of relief for sure oh my god finally it's done like yes. when you polish it we'll yeah. polish more like the guy who thought that you were <laughs> Apologies. Yes. <laughs> now, um, we are nearing the end of the show, but just a few more questions left for you, Anna, because like, uh, I am so intrigued. Again, like I can't wait for you to, I mean, of course, you know, take all the time you need. Yeah. But, um, like, I can't wait for to see more of your pieces, but also more of like the intricate work that you have actually done with like with Monstrian as well. Because it's like, again, for me, that was like, this is so genius. Like, I was really <laughs> Blown away. I was blown away. Is that a pun for <laughs> the net Netflix show blown right. away? <laughs> so yeah. that's really have nothing but like high hopes for you for sure. Because it's just amazing what you do. Not a lot of people, like you said, actually Thank do this you. around the world. Now, what is one memorable piece of advice that you received from your dad as you are, you know, now making a name for yourself in Philippine glass sculpting? Um I guess it's just <laughs> believe in yourself. Like, that's what he always says. Like, to any artist, like, that you have to believe in yourself because, um, you know, you have to be the first one. Like, you can't expect people to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to help yourself, to support yourself, and believe what you're doing uh, is right. Or you, even if it's not there yet you know you just keep trying and eventually you get where you want to be so yeah just believe in yourself yeah i hope there's some like aspiring artists who are tuned in either live or listening on radio as well who might have just needed to hear that also so that <laughs> can remember why they started though and more why yeah. they're doing what they love now for for let's say Art isn't for everybody, and you know people have their own um, interpretations of it, or don't know how to understand art. So when it comes to mm -hmm. glass sculpting, let's say for novice eyes, how would you suggest one to look at, you know, glass art? What are the basic elements, I guess, that they can look at to see that this is actually a nice piece, or is it just purely interpretation? Um, I think it's interpretation, really, like. Uh, if you like it, you like it. You know, you like the colors, it's shiny. You like different <laughs> effects, you know. Uh, to each their own. And, like, you don't, like, as an artist also, you can't please everyone. Yeah. So you will have pieces that people don't like or have pieces that people like more. Um, what's good is you take note of that and you'd be like, okay, maybe I should do make, make more of this or... Um, you know, to to learn from your old works as well. It's always a learning process. Like, what can I do better? Or what can I do more? What do people enjoy looking at? Mm -hmm. um, for me, like, for a future um, works, I, I've already thought of lots of, like, subject matters that people are interested in or... Mm -hmm people like so i'm leaning into that because like compared to my dad he does a lot of uh, mother and child um yeah. like uh female form <laughs> like breasts and stuff so i'm like <laughs> yeah I, I i have a you know rough idea of what i want to showcase as well so yeah like yeah. Just just it's keep exciting. trying. Yeah, yeah, keep going. And just like, you know, it's exciting for those who 
are interested or are curious about glass art, glass sculpting, and what you have in store also for, you know, potential buyers or even just for yourself, because like, you know, this is something that's that you absolutely love doing. So like yeah. no pressure at <laughs> when like i'm not gonna ask you when but in due time i'm sure you will have like some pieces that you will want to work on for sure now yeah. before you before we end the show i have a very random question but okay <laughs> as, as a as someone who looks at art it's like my mom she we have like a very small like online art gallery and so i am familiar with like different uh painters actually yeah uh, Filipino painters and <clears throat> you always know like if it's someone's work whether it's the style that they have or sometimes it's even like their signature so I actually looked at yeah. your signature and your sculpture so I was like I want to I just wanted to ask randomly how, how long or how did you think of like a signature I feel like artists might think of like okay how do I want to sign off all of my work so for yeah. you was it something like that the part Okay, I have to think about how I want to sign off my work. So at least it's not just me saying Anna or Lina, because yours is just A or Lina, diba? Right? And so, like, how, yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, um, because I, I've always seen my dad, like, signing his work. So it's always been bold, like, or Lina, you know, yeah. all caps. And I was like, oh, I feel like I'm a younger Arlena or like I'm a little Arlena. So um, my Arlena part, the uh, after the O, it's um, in what, not caps, in in small letters. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I always thought like A and O. So like the A is kind of like um, a half star. Mm, yeah. Mm -mm. So it's kind of like, Oh, because it, it kind of feels weird saying, but like, oh, like I'm a star. <laughs> so like I'm bright and shiny. So um, I, love <laughs> I got the star with an A and then it's connected to the O because, you know, I am connected to the Orlina. <laughs> I'm kind of connected to the Orlina name, brand already. <laughs> like no, no no use like running away for a bit like just embrace oh. it yeah. so yeah i love that um. i asked that question see there was a story behind it i mean <laughs> <laughs> that's great now, so what's what's next for you now like um i know you're you're apart from museo or lina that you guys help manage also um there was also the gaitai art beat that you yeah. organized as well so the last time i think was in 2019 2020 you had to cancel yeah. it but so do you think that's going to get up and running like next year? Um, hopefully. Because um, I, I run it with my sister, Ning Ning. Uh, right now she's in Germany. So we have right. to we have to talk about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sure. We have to talk about it. But yeah, hopefully soon. Like, um, like people are having more concerts now and stuff. So I think, you know with the government and stuff it it will allow us to have a concert a public event again um yeah so i really hope soon uh we it will still be in the works and the talk talk about mm -hmm. but yeah hopefully we'll we'll have that and then it for my art um my next exhibit will be in January and February. So oh. in January, I'll have in Missy Orlina in Tagaytay. And then in February, we have the Philippine Art Fair in the link. Wow. That's so, yeah. right. Oh my gosh. So now I that. have reason to go because I've been meaning <laughs> to go, but I'm like, very, I know someone personally who's an artist. I want to check this out. But yeah, I'm so happy for you and like how much you've Thanks. accomplished so far. And yeah, like what you said, like you're a little already now, but like you're still so young and you're gonna figure out. I mean, like we're both young, right? So, yeah, yeah, we're sure. both young. We're we're, we're still young. young. Yeah, and so <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you'll figure out more like um, what other pieces and what other intricate details it is that you want to um, add 
to your glass sculpting for sure. And so it's just like, I'm so glad I was actually able to catch up with you and just like know yeah. how much how much life has changed since I know, I, right? It's it's, it's been, I don't want to say how many years. <laughs> it's been, you know, a while. It's been a while. <laughs> now, um, how can... How can uh, monsters actually reach out or see your artworks if they're available online. Oh yeah, um, so you can follow me on Instagram at Anna Orlina Glass. Um, I also have a website anorlina.com. Um, so yeah, I mostly uh, post stuff there or mostly stories. I don't. <laughs> I'm not like a big social media poster. Um, only when it's needed. Uh, and yeah, I would like. I can I do a shout out? Also, <laughs> I've had requests, so of course I want to <laughs> shout out my family. Um, shout out God, thank you. I'm very <laughs> blessed for all the things you've given me, and um, you know, to have uh, my my dad to guide me. Yeah. Um, very blessed for that, and I want to shout out my Bath fam and my boyfriend Nell. Hi. <laughs> so, yeah. Can you send me I know my my warm regards to your father? I've never met him, but I just want to because, like, you know, he's a nice yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, Anna, for gracing her on Thursdays with your presence and your talent. It, it's been amazing. Thank it's you. Amazing. Thank you for having me. So it's glad for all of the monsters who are also tuned in. Uh, you can catch me again at next Thursday and look up AnnaArlina.com. Look at her pieces. So you know what I'm talking about, right? So that you can all be amazed like me. I'm amazed by artists. So like to know somebody who is in the art scene is useful. That's just like that really it's a killing factor in some <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thank you so much uh, for all the monsters who are tuned in. Uh, that is it. That is the show uh, for now, though. Keep it locked only here on The Monster. Bye, guys.